It's no secret that Nigeria is the largest economy in Africa. What's more to her? With over 3 billion metric tons of iron ore deposits found in Kogi, Enugu and Niger states. An estimated 10 million tons of lead zinc veins spread across many states in Nigeria. Over 7.5 million tons of barite in Taraba and Bauchi states. An abundance of lithium and gold in Nasarawa, Ogun state and many more. Nigeria is blessed with a diverse mix of mineral deposits. The Nigerian government, through the Ministry of of solid minerals development is setting the pace to reposition Nigeria as an economic powerhouse. Join us every Monday, 16.30 GMT, and on Saturday, 9 hours GMT, for the program Uncovering Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Uncovering Nigeria's Hidden Gems. Where we highlight the activities of the solid mineral sector to discover the vast natural resources of the country and know more about the sector. Remember, Mondays at 16.30 GMT and Saturdays at 9 hours GMT. Uncovering, Uncovering Nigeria's, Nigeria's Hidden Gems. My name is Patrick Odiego, MD Polygon Investment Nigeria Limited. I equally serve as Vice President Mines, Benue Chamber of Commerce and Industry, and of late um, Secretary General, Association of Miners and Processors of Berite. Berite, of course, we know, is the mainstay of drilling mud that actually powers our national economy. You can't drill any drop of oil without usage of barite. Actually, um, coming into barite mining was accidental. Um, we are actually a company that exported lead as a trader. And through the experiences that we acquired from that export, it becomes very clear that we need to actually assess our own mine to be able to control the value chain. So it happens that the mine that we've got that has lead equally has barite okay. and zinc. These three products are from the mine. So barite having a lower specific gravity is more on the top. So we have to do something with it. So through market research, we discovered that barite is actually used in the oil and gas industry. It's like we have money on the table and we don't want to pick it up. That is what barite is. From a little exploration activity that we carry out at our site, we have discovered over 2 million metric ton, under 20% of the site area. 2 million metric ton, giving the information and the opaqueness in barite in the oil and gas industry as a whole is equally impacting on barite. Because as it stands today, we don't know which of the government institutions that you can go to and through a press of a button, they will tell you that this is the quantum of barite that has been used last year in Nigeria. I don't know which institution in Nigeria that can give us that information. And I can tell you that that information is still traveling. It's not available. And that is how it is so difficult for the barite miners to assess capability. So to your question, what is it that we can do to solve this problem? It is highly solvable and it's something that can be solved in less than one hour. What do you need? You need the political will, which I know that the Honorable Minister has, which we are asking him to exercise. Call the IOCs through the OPTS, Oil Producers Trade Session, under Lagos um, Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Call the barite processors. Call the oil servicing company. Bring the barite mining companies that are licensed to a round table. The problem will be solved under one hour because the IOCs that get the contract to produce barite will be read a riot act. Nigeria is not a dumping ground where you import value that we can exercise. When you import those value, what you are saying to Nigerians is to continue to kill themselves because the capacity to develop the country will not be there on a local platform. Most bright mines are in a rural area. Imagine what, for argument's sake, $300 million because 
because we are now assuming that about 300 million dollar is what is used annually in importation of barite. It's an assumed number. It's an a projected number because the information the information is still not readily available, which actually is not the way it should be. The oil and gas must be able to say, look, in their operations, this is the volume of barite they use. And that will help the barite miners in their planning and the structure of their business so that it does, everything is not left to chance. As it stands today, there is no structure, there is no organization, and the, the, uh, the company or the sector that is receiving the lowest hanging fruit are the barite miners. Because the, really, you can't talk of barite without mining barite. So if there is no barite market to the barite miner, of course the system will be lopsided. And that's exactly what is happening today, unfortunately. So if we want to create the right barite market, we have to follow this trajectory. All the stakeholders have to be unmasked. And all the stakeholders will be forced to do the right thing. And if they do the right thing, in less than two months, we will flood the market with barite. Our barite is arguably the best quality barite you can find anywhere in the world. We can guarantee a standard that is above American Petroleum Institute standard, which is the barometer of barite production in the world. In fact, all over the world, because of excessive, excessive um, uh, usage of barite, right, the quality has been further reduced from 4.2 specific gravity to 4.1. Now, this barite that I'm holding here in my hand, this very barite is over 4.6 specific gravity. So, for us to deliver 4.2, which is above international standard, we have to add more impurities to suppress this further to 4.2. So we are guaranteeing 4.2. To that extent, we don't see any reason why anybody should import even a grain, a grain of barite into this country because we have more than enough. If our com company alone has over 2 million metric ton, under 20% of our site area, you can imagine what other mining sites have. Maybe they have capacity in their data set that they can't speak with any more of authority as I'm doing. Right? But all the same, I don't see any barite mine in Nigeria that has less than one million metric ton. So, because they have not carried out detailed exploration, does not mean that it's not there. So, all we need to do, all we are asking for, which we know that our sagacious minister is going to hold these people to their neck, right? Not longer to their ear, to their neck. And press them small, the way they have been pressing us, right? Intimidate them a little bit, and let's get this barite order going. Because once this thing happens, imagine 30 million dollar domicile in our rural area. Just picture that for a second. Are we still going to be having the most of the challenges that we have today? No, we won't have them. We are having them because we are being suffocated. If there is no market, all your effort is in vain. Every day you are going to, to TV, um, giving interviews up and down. But at the end of the day, you need the market. We, we are not... We are not um, civil, um, what's it called, trade unionists. No, we are business people. We are not supposed to be seen. Where you're supposed to see us is inside the mine, dirty. Now you're seeing us in Abuja clean. Why? We don't want to be clean, we want to be dirty. Send us back to mine with an order, please. Barite is not only used in the oil and gas industry. It has so many other applications, including your car, your brake pad. It's made with barite. If you have laceration in your tummy and you need to do internal body x-ray, you go to the chemist and you buy something called barium milkshake. It's made from this barite. Right? When you remove every of the impurities, that's when you have the quality of that barite. And we can guarantee such quality. Binding material, for example, paper that you write with, you use barite for whitening also because this is pure white. It's actually a chemical. Right? So, there's so much multiple use and our company, we are quite ambitious. We know that the low-hanging fruit for us is the oil and gas sector. 
And once we exercise the oil and gas sector, we will not be able to continue the industrialization of this product. So we vehemently agree with the minister about value addition. Because by the time we're adding value to this, there will be so many other spin-offs that will create more jobs, more opportunities for our country. But as it stands, the primary market is not there. Thank you very much. On the coal side, it's part of what has really injured our nation. We are, it's like we are thinking that because we are black people, we cannot get things done from A to Z and remain on the narrative in getting it done. Your question is absolutely 100%. We will be exporting the right. I said, mark my word, we will be exporting the right in less than six months if the right thing is done today. Because we were going to meet what the industry needs, which as it stands today, we don't know the number. And it's wrong that we don't know the number. And I'm challenging the system to tell us the number. We must know the number because if you know the number, you can also be able to calculate. Numerous. Our challenges are on really quite a lot. Accessibility, because these roads are local roads. The roads leading to most of the mines are in a very poor state, in a very, very bad state. And I have a suggestion because, you know, it's not complaint. I think it's work in progress. What we are saying here is this. There should be an interministerial approach to mining. Mining execution should not be just one. In fact, there should be one stop shop for, for mining execution in Nigeria. Because there will be some aspect of mining that will require communication in an environment where there is no network. And you are mining. What are you mining? How are you going to get information? How are you going to assess information? You can assess information. So, Ministry of Communication will be on the table. Access road. There will be some mines where there is no good access road. You can't even access during rainy season as it is now. Ministry of Transportation will be on the table because mining is something that is catalytic, extremely catalytic to any nation. Mining shouldn't be something that is left casual, or oh, people just wake up and start digging. Digging what? Which environment are you going to dig? That environment belongs to me, government. Right? I'm not going to yield that space to you. In order to control it properly, not controlling suffocatively, but controlling for nation building and nation capacity development, we have to be more intentional. Everything as a whole. And I must call our Nigerians that have money I don't know what to do with their money. Please, hear me well. Get your money into mining. There is no structure, there is no sector, there is no industry. In fact, there is nothing in life that can happen without mining. So when people don't understand the footprint of mining, I'm so sorry. Your mobile phone is mining. Your house is mining. Your car is mining. Your phone, everything is mining. This camera I'm looking at is mining. Without mineral, you wouldn't have it. So we need to be really, really deliberate so that we can develop this country. Nigeria is a blessed country. We can't be having this type of distortions. And we want the team to be together. The state needs to work with the minister to be able to address some of the pressing issues because mining remains in the exclusive list. And it's only the minister that has power to make pronouncement on mining. Every other person will go via the minister. If you want anything to be done in your state, go through the minister. Any pronouncement within security, you can declare coffee. But when it comes to stop work, it's only the minister that has constitutional power to do so. So once we continue to work with the minister, everything will be wonderful because our country is blessed. In next life, if I come out and it's not Nigeria, I'll go back. That's how wonderful Nigeria is.